welcome to Sister Power, back by popular demand, sisters across oceans, Hawaii to West Africa Poetry Exchange. Our guests for this episode, Carla Brundage. She's founded West Oakland to West Africa Poetry Exchange, which facilitates cross-cultural exchange between Oakland and West African poets. Dr. Allison E. Francis. Last year, Allison published a volume of collaborative Rinsha poetry, Mulata. Not so tragic with Oakland based poet activist Carla. Mariska Taylor Darko's short story, The Proud Peacock, was selected for an anthology in Story, Story, Story Come, published in East, West, and Southern Africa. And another short story, Escapade, was featured in the anthology Resist Resilience. And lastly, but not least, Shauna Sherman's nonfiction writing has appeared in USA. Today, the sun and libraries, culture, history, and society. In 2021, she was named a library journal mover and shaker. Mm. And she is a voices of our nation's arts foundation writing fellow. Queens, welcome to Sister Power. Hello. Aloha, welcome ladies. Are we here? Aloha. 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 Right now, let's get this party started. This is exciting. This is backed by popular demand. And you know, Sisters Across Oceans has been on two other times, and the book is absolutely phenomenal. And we are going to start our questions with Allison. Allison is in Italy and she's she's with us at 2 a.m. in the morning. So this is just absolute. Thank you. Mahalo Nui Loa. Thank you very much. Aloha. So, Allison, what inspires you to write poetry? Thank you so much, Sharon, for allowing me to be on this amazing show with these fellow poets, writers, and activists. Uh, poetry for me is one of those kind of passionate endeavors that is akin to breathing or drinking water. So for me, sometimes poetry can be inspired by just listening to two people having a conversation in a cafe or hearing one lyric on the radio and suddenly being inspired to develop an entire concept around that phrase, that lyric or a memory. And sometimes I'm even inspired by a nostalgic taste or smell. So I, I find that most people think that poets or any writers have to like sit in front of a screen or have their notebook with it all the time. And that, that is something that definitely happens for the majority of us, but it can just be as easy as walking down the street. And suddenly I think I've got the germ of a poet a poem and I'm going to write this down quickly and then go back later and develop this into something more substantial. You know, I always uh, make this comment. I admire writers and poets because you have to start with a blank sheet of paper. And that to me is just absolutely, absolutely amazing. <laughs> Shauna, the librarian and poet, how have women helped support you in your career and help meet your goals? Thank you for that question, Sharon. And thank you for having me on Think Tech Hawaii. You know, I'm a, a Hawaii native, born and raised in on Oahu. Shout out to all my Kaneohe peeps. Um, that's a great question because, you know, it was sort of hard, you know, when you, in popular culture, you don't really hear much about how women support each other. But in all my career, whether it was trying to be a journalist or whether it was being a librarian. Um, I've always depended on the support of women to help me through it, whether that was um, mentors in journalism school like Erna Smith or Eva Martinez 
or in programs like um, West Oakland to West Africa, where I got a chance to meet other women who had the same goals, uh, writing goals as I did, and um, was able to share poetry and be inspired by their poems in this project. So it's a lot of ways that women have inspired me and I'm just so grateful for the support I've gotten through from women throughout my career. Oh yeah, sisters in Parang Hawaii, this is what we're all about. Motivate, educate and empower all women. Mariska. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yay, there she is from Ghana with that pretty smile. Welcome back. We missed you for Thank the two All right. Yeah. You mm -hmm. mentioned in your profile that you write a lot for children. Does it include poetry? And what do you aim to achieve with that? Um, yeah, um, I do do a lot of um, poetry for children and I go around the schools reading to them. Um, I'm bringing out uh, two books that are poet poems that are being fully illustrated in color. Um, what it does is it makes the children listen because the sentences are very short. And then I use a lot of imagery. So they, and then in between reading the poems, I ask them questions on what they think I meant or can they describe in their own words what I've just read. It, it makes them relax because we've had a lot of um, bad training here where we learn on rote. I think the old system and you don't talk when a teacher speaks and you don't question and all that. So this way we're trying to get children to open up and to be able to question, discuss and all that. Uh, sort of like a Montessori thing, but bringing it more down to the local schools, not the international schools. So I really go to deprived areas, deprived schools, and then I sort of have chats with the children, you know. And then um, sometimes I ask them to write, a, I start a poem, a sort of the Renshi style, start a poem, and then I ask them to give me a few lines to continue the poem. And sometimes amazing things come out from that. Yeah, they say kids can say the darndest things, right? <laughs> yes. <laughs> Carla, 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 the brainchild behind this with your mother, Pacific Raven Press, right? Yes, with Pacific Raven Press. Okay, so tell our sister power viewers about the partnership between Pacific Raven Press and West Oakland to West Africa. Thank you, thank you, Sharon. Um, I feel so honored to be here. This, this whole um, experience of West Oakland to West Africa has really taught me a lot about collaborating. And I think the most wonderful thing about it is it did start as West Oakland to West Africa. Um, and our first exchange was all Oakland poets. And that's where I got to meet Mariska and um, the other poets from a Casa in Ghana. And at that time, um, Pacific Raven Press became the publisher of our first uh, anthology called Our Spirits Carry Our Voices. And it was really, uh, thankful to the owner, Catherine Takara, who is also my mom, who made publication possible in that first book. Um, since then, we've grown and we did a, an exchange which included, which partnered partly with the links in Honolulu. And we had Hawaii to West Africa, Hiva. And the book coming from there was Sisters Across Oceans. And again, what's been just incredible has just been when we put these books together, what you learn about the other women, the experiences that people have had and can share. And most importantly, I think how we continue to collaborate. And again, thank you even to um, Think Tech Hawaii and to Sharon, how we continue to come together and learn more about each other. So it's just been wonderful. That's good. You know, Shana, I want to ask you, 
What inspires you to write poetry? Thanks, Sharon. I, I, the same as some, what, what Allison said, you know, anything can inspire me, but like I work at a library here in the San Francisco, San Francisco Public Library as the African American Center librarian. And sometimes a lot of the books that we have in the center inspire me to write poetry. Right now I'm working on a, a project that looks at um, books that have runaway slave advertisements from the colonial period. And um, I'm trying to work on a project of poems inspired by that. So, I mean, it really can come from anywhere. But I, one of my, and I heard a, a poet talk about this on Verses today. One of my big goals is to, you know, just try to, you know, bring more good in the world, I suppose. And, you know, so that inspires me to write poetry. All right. You know, uh, Mariska and Carla, we have an event coming up. Sunday, December the 18th, the Honolulu African American Association is putting on a free event. And so Mariska, you are participating in it. Just tell us a little bit about what you're gonna speak about on December the 18th. Um, I'm basically reading um, two of my poems from the Sisters Across Ocean. And uh, I, uh, was uh, partnered with um, Paula Major. And um, uh, the poems uh, actually flowed so much together. It, it didn't seem like we were from different continents, you know, uh, when she wrote her poem and then I read mine and wrote mine as well. Uh, so we're going to discuss our poems. There are two other poets as well who are going to join us. And uh, we, we look forward to that because uh, we had the exchange in writing, but we're going to have the visuals now of meeting those partners for the first time. Yeah, that's going to be wonderful uh, at the Doors Duke Theater. Carla, talk about, you know, elaborate a little more about the upcoming event and the collaboration with the Honolulu Museum. Thank you. Yeah, thanks to uh, another one of our Link sisters, uh, Daphne Barbie Wooten, and all the other people who helped organize this, Sarah Fang, who's at the um, Honolulu Museum. We're going to do a reading in which we will have um, nine poets. It's on family day. It's completely free. It starts at uh, two o'clock, and it'll be an interactive reading in which we will be sharing our work from Sisters Across Oceans, as well as inviting through video three of our African partner poets, our Ghanaian African, our Ghanaian poets, Mariska, uh, Brittany Taichi, and um, Pia Kaur. Yeah, that, you know, and we have entertainment. Uh, we have um, Musa. Musa, Musa will be performing and Elvira and they're with, they'll be playing drums. They're with Siwa Farah. And, and also there's gonna be a book signing. The books are gonna be on sale. Um, Carla, where can people purchase the Oceans, um, Sisters Across Oceans? Sisters Across Oceans is available from Pacific Raven Press. We have a website, um, pacificravenpress.co. Also, uh, please do come to the reading. You can get them there at the library. It's already there in the bookstore in the Honolulu Museum. And um, Pacific Raven Press actually is located right in Kaava, Hawaii. So you can also order books uh, online. You know, we're gonna do a little switch up. Because Allison has a poem for us. And I want the, our sister power viewers to hear this poem. What is the title of your poem, Allison? Uh, the poem is entitled Marguerite. It's about my grandmother. So this poem was inspired by the one of the first workshops that Carla run, ran with all of us who ended up becoming participants and submitters to the anthology. So I'm, I'm very, very grateful and thankful for Carla and for everyone else involved in this project. Marguerite, I'm sure you'll hear my message, neither praise song nor condemnation. Harsh woman with mottled skin and raspy breath, wrapped in frayed florals, 
thick soled slippers, Clairol hair color number 44, a laugh like brittle glass. Unlike mine, your lips thinned, always parted, always pink. Did you just smile? Such grim humor while stirring vats of Quaker oats and grits in your posted stamp of a kitchen. Did you see me stealing pats of your salted butter, melting on my midnight tongue? Oh, you smell like a warm buttermilk, taste like a tablespoon of castor oil, sing like that green parakeet caged in your tiny front window. Mother of my mother, do I wish to be like you? Hard, pink, plastic brush on my hair, your touch brief, stiff, perfunctory, your hazel stare long and steady. Suddenly, you launch at me like a vulture, drawing blood like a mature mosquito. Marguerite, you, you is no daisy. No tropical drink, serving your men blue ribbon beer and veined Swiss colony cheese. But I think you cried silently behind the canopy of hot California nights. Tortured, yet strong, deep wells of family secrets stored in your eyes. <laughs> Despite your spite, you lived your life completely. You loved your people fiercely. And there we have it. We have four, hey, five fierce women here on Sister Power. I got to include myself on that for sure. <laughs> Hello. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So, Mariska, what advice would you give to the young women who are going to start off writing poetry? Um, I would say they shouldn't be afraid to put down what they feel. Mm -hmm. Sometimes, uh, especially when you live in a, a community um, that where everybody knows everybody, you're afraid to put down the truth or you're afraid to say things that will identify people and events in your life. But um, as you get older, you'll find out that it doesn't really matter. People will read it. They might say, yes, um, I know who she's talking about or what she's talking about. But in the end, it's just memories for them. But you would have let off uh, that burden that is on you. Because a lot of times writing poetry is a way of speaking without speaking. You're, you're putting down your problems for other people to understand without actually facing them to say it. Because sometimes some of the things you write about are painful and you really can't discuss them, but you can put it on paper. So they shouldn't be afraid. They should just let it all out. Let it all hang out. Shana, what are you working on next? I am working on the project I mentioned earlier, The um, the series of pro poems based on the uh, runaway slave ads. And I agree with um, Mariska's advice. And I just say, just get, just start writing. It doesn't matter how good, it doesn't have to be good. You just write, just write, write, write. Yeah, Carla. Inspire and motivate and educate the women who are just starting out and who are feeling a little hesitant about telling their story. Yes, I agree. I think that writing is a way to not only express yourself, but to connect with others um, through um, writing, whether it's in a journal, which is usually just privately read, or but I always encourage people to share their writing, which is become sort of my passion. I feel that there's real connections made and um, especially during the West Oakland to West Africa, you know, we didn't choose very um, difficult topics. Uh, for example, we talked about a woman who in, was inspirational in your life or something that was happening in the news. Uh, but you find that when people 
collaborate and share with each other on even things that happen every day, the most magical things can come out of those exchanges. Yeah, well, let's go back and talk about the event that's on Sunday, December the 18th. I look at this event, Queens, as a pre-Kwanzaa celebration. You know, uh, we're getting ready for the holidays. You can dress in your ethnic uh, African attire. Uh, so, and, and, and it's free, everyone bring your family, it's free. So Carla, let's sum up. What's, let's tell us what's gonna take place that day. Well, we're definitely gonna have some fun. Uh, people are gonna be in a great mood. It's um, all the work is accessible to all people, young people and um, people at older people. And um, it'll just be, some dancing, hopefully, some music, some poetry, and definitely some sharing. Yeah, so we have a few minutes left. Shauna, Allison, and Marissa, each take a minute. Is there anything you would like to share with us, starting with you, Shauna? I just want to express my gratitude for being here today and among these um, strong women and being able to participate in this project. And, you know, if you want to write, you could just start writing and, you know, um, find a group that you can write with because it is it is so fun to, like, hear other people's writing and also share your writing. Thank you. Allison. Uh, I'm going to just go ditto with everything that Shauna said and everyone else in this amazing interview and also share that one of the projects I'm working on next is I've been uh, commissioned by the tourism board for one of the local villages on the lake to write a series of monologues, dramatic monologues that celebrate some of the historical events that have occurred uh, on Lake Como in Italy. So I'm very excited to be part of that project this year. That will happen in December. Congratulations, Mariska from Ghana. Yes, I just want to say I'm also honored to be amongst all of you. And I want to thank Carla for bringing uh, sisters across oceans, woe to wa, also to us. And it's given us more exposure here. And um, I hope one day uh, to come down to Hawaii. It's been my dream from when I watched South Pacific with Elvis when I was very young. I said, that is where I'm going to go. <laughs> so, I mean, I, and then I also uh, watched one program of, uh, of the bounty hunters also who were in Hawaii. So I mean, those things, you know, I said, no, I have to come there. White sands, beaches, you know, coconut water, and then learn the dance as well. So definitely, definitely a place I have to go to. So, Thank you for meeting all of you. I'm so honored. You are most welcome. I call the um, Hawaii, our paradise, I call it the bus stop to heaven. All right, Carla, you and I, let's sum this up for Sunday, December the 18th. It's a free event. We've got Musa. We have drum. What else do we have? We have our um, poets. We have some strong women sharing their stories. We have um, just a wonderful time. And please uh, come and see us, get the book, meet the poets in person, and um, be able to also meet our African poets through, through video, but also they've worked really hard to present their stories to you. And hopefully, I agree, Mariska, we got to get you there. <laughs> oh, ladies, queens, thank you, Allison. Thank you, Carla. Thank you, Marissa and Mahalo, Shana, for your time, your expertise, and your wisdom. And from all of us here at Think Tech Hawaii and Sisters Empowering Hawaii and Sister Power, happy holidays. I'm Sharon Thomas Yarbrough. Aloha.
Thank you so much for watching Think Tech Hawaii. If you like what we do, please like us and click the subscribe button on YouTube and the follow button on Vimeo. You can also follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and LinkedIn, and donate to us at thinktechhawaii.com. Mahalo.